Coming up, a car accident leaves a young girl fighting for her life. Malia, Malia, open your eyes, sweetheart. Open your eyes, sweetheart. A young swimmer has nearly drowned and is still in a critical state. Bringing up a lot of salt, frothy sputum. Yeah. And a motocross rider's been run over at a high speed. It's come off and another rider at speed has gone over his back. Where is that pain? Is that in your back or somewhere else? Okay. In code one. In Mission 1, the Auckland-based crew has been tasked to a car accident with multiple patients, all critical. One of them, 11-year-old Malia, has suffered a severe head injury after the vehicle she was in crashed into a bridge. Her vital signs have dropped to critical levels. It is going to take the Hilo 25 minutes to arrive at the crash site in Dargaville. And they are not the only rescue chopper racing to get there. The smash has left a scene of carnage. We've got another helicopter, the um, Northland machine is coming along as well, plus uh, other engines. We don't actually have a lot of information. Is it a motor vehicle accident? I believe so. Yeah. The team arrive at the scene and find Heli Med 1 has already arrived. Westpac rescue from Heli Med 1 on Ember. Go ahead. Yeah, we have an 11 year old female, status one, traumatic brain injury. Uh, we'll leave RSI for you guys when you arrive. Uh, Roger, copy. High speed, single vehicle, bridge, concrete structure. Clear the scene. Go down straight down the road there. Clear down. About to touch. Touching now. They're good to clear up. Clear up. Intensive care paramedic Ross and emergency doctor Alana are well prepared for the handover. Is this status one in here? Go. Okay, guys, go. Ross and Alana here. So what have we got here? Handover. Um, seems to be an isolated head injury at this point in time. Okay. So, so... Open your eyes. Yeah, I'll go and we'll take Open it your down. eyes, sweetheart. Yep. You're all right. Sweetheart. Troy, are you happy right. to stay here and assist us? You've yeah. been in an accident, yeah. sweetheart. You're going to have to go to hospital. She's basically isolated head, I think, at the moment, although yep. I haven't had a chance to do BC. Yep. Um, she's opening eyes to stimulus, so yep. two. Um, she's sort of making a bit of purposeful movement. I give her a five. Yep. And then voice is nil. So seven, eight. Seven with a half a one. Hour, 40 yeah, yeah. So uh, it's pretty, yeah, I think we should uh, RSI, RSI, yeah. secure her away. This is a young female rear seat passenger. She's taken a large impact on her left hand side. But the main problem appears to be a head injury at this stage. So what the plan is, is to um, put her to um, sleep with some medicines, uh, put a breathing tube down for her just to stabilise on the way to hospital, then we'll fly down to Starship. Malia, Malia, open your eyes, sweetheart. Open your eyes, sweetheart. Malia. In mission two. The Fitianga-based emergency chopper is responding to reports of a young man who's been pulled unconscious from the water. 21-year-old Emmanuel has been found fully submerged and struggling in the water when he was rescued by his father and a bystander. He's still in grave danger from secondary drowning and needs to get to hospital fast. The crew are only five minutes flying time from the scene at the East Coast Tourist Beach at Cathedral Cove. Have arrived and said he's status two in a serious condition. The only note we've got is to be dragged out of the water and now vomiting. It will be there uh, very quickly. We'll land on the beach, just make sure the scene is secure, and the ambulance will be there, and then we'll assess and um, get the patient sorted and transported. I'll do a pre landing check. Throttles are forward, fly RPMs good, talks are matched. Landing checklist completed. Roger. Sure. No, yeah. the main Cathedral Cove beach, next one along. Oh, yeah, down there, I can see him down there. Control Westpac 1, landing. 30 seconds. Copy, thank you, Westpac 1. The soft sand, got the rock there on my right hand Roger. side. Yep, clearing the rock now. Moving across to my 2 o'clock. Coming on. Nice one. Little. Thank 
you. I'll just go over and see what they need. Yep. Intensive care paramedic Marcel arrives to find that the ambulance team are still very worried about the patient's condition. He went under, disappeared, they dragged him out from under the water. He's bringing up a lot of salt, frothy spewed him. Yeah. He was definitely a non-fatal drowning. Yeah. It's a miracle that Emmanuel is alive at all, thanks to a bystander and his father, Anthony. How long are you guys on holiday here for? Oh, just our first time here. Yeah. We'll be a around here. Are you, are you staying in many days or are you going home today? Oh, going home tonight. Hey, Mark. Tonight, oh, you're going, going home today. tonight. Yeah. Okay. Well, go take him straight to Middlemore. Yeah. Okay. The risk for Emmanuel now is that there is still water in his lungs. This could cause secondary drowning. Has he had any anti medics? Nothing. So I wonder, do you, yeah, I think if we can get four of um, on Dan's, that'd be great. This chap here was dragged out of the surf. He was under the water for quite some time and he was dragged out and he was. Uh, not totally unconscious, but not very with it either, and coughing up a lot of stuff. He's quite wheezy in his lungs, so that suggests he sucked in a bit of water. And we're just giving him some uh, anti-nausea medication, got oxygen on, we'll just do some monitoring in the aircraft, and then we'll go to Middlemore Hospital, to his uh, area hospital he's from. Near Dargaville, the helicopter and ambulance medics are preparing 11-year-old Malia for an emergency procedure called RSI. Her severe brain injury has caused serious breathing problems. You've been in a bad accident. We're just going to look after you, all right, sweetheart? They're going to perform a rapid sequence intubation, or an RSI, by passing a breathing tube into Malia's windpipe ensuring that her airway remains clear. You're all right, sweetheart, you're all right, you're all right. It's just a mask on your face. Just a mask on your face. We can't have her come out of like this. Yeah, yeah. I'll go for the Mac 3. Just going to give her 50 mics of fentanyl, guys. Then we've got a blood pressure of 193 over 58. She'll have to get that down a bit. Yeah. Um, yep. Tinny, once you're happy, we'll run the checklist, OK? Um, so it's fine, we can Troy, can you grab yeah, another can bag, see. litre bag of sea line, please? Um, thanks. We've just got a mask over to help you, OK? Yeah. Grab provider. Alana. If at any stage we, we can't oxygenate or can't ventilate, I'll declare an airway emergency. The team must run a checklist each time to ensure the process runs like clockwork. Timing can make all the difference. And I've got, no, an, and I've got an LMA yeah. out and ready to go. LMA right, ready yep. to go. I'm yep. just, OK? OK. Uh, BVM, confirm check. Check. Uh, suction tested. Check. Moringoscope tested. Check. Maintenance morphine with Check. check. Uh, emergency metaraminol. Metaraminol, check. OK. Checklist complete, post RSI to come. OK, right, I'm happy to go when you are. I'm just yep. going to give 20 of ketamine to start just a delayed sequence. So yep. You can pre-oxygenate her for a minute. And then I'll give the rest of the 80 after that. Okay, yep. so 20 of ketamine going in now. Yep. Ketamine and sucks in. Malia has just received a mixture of anaesthetic drugs. Sea line's running free. Which will help put her body in a safe condition for the next phase. She's getting fasciculations now. They now have a very short window to complete this dangerous procedure. Okay, clock started. Okay, pressing the cord. Malia now can't breathe on her own at all, so they need to get the tube in fast. At the popular East Coast beach of Cathedral Cove, 21-year-old Emmanuel has been pulled from the water unconscious after nearly drowning. G'day, mate. No, Marcel. Have you got any medical problems normally? Any allergies to medicines? No, you're OK? So you don't take medicines normally? His father, Anthony, helped drag him from the water. If we take a passenger, who wants to come? If we can... You will? OK. And are you ready as you are? Yep. OK. Paramedic Marcel and the team must move swiftly as there's a high risk that Emmanuel could be suffering from secondary drowning. So we're OK to... Yeah, we're just going on to the stretcher that he drags out. This is caused by inhaled water irritating the lungs and could prove to be fatal if not treated immediately. Emmanuel could also suffer hypothermia, so it's important to wrap him tight in a thermal blanket. That'll keep you nice and warm, mate. Oh, that's a wrong cop. Right, the patient in the back. Well done. Little more right here. Hey, Bert, thank you. All right, trims are good. Coming left. 
Pass clear, left, 100 degrees. Good job. Okay, rolling out. Good job. Status. Traffic, two things. Degrees. He was with his family at Hahe, swimming at Cathedral Cove. Something happened and he was not able to get out and he was struggling and he was actually found floating and dragged out by the sound of it, not fully aware of what was going on. He uh, was very cold, he was uh, drowsy and he was vomiting a lot of water up. The ambulance personnel have got there first and uh, assessed him and they found a bit of a, uh, a wheeze in his lungs on his right side so that sort of indicates possibly he's sucked a little bit of water in. At the moment, uh, we've got him at status two, serious, and uh, we're cruising on the way for 30 minutes to Middlemore Hospital, because he's from that area, so. In mission three, the Auckland-based team is en route to help a teenage boy with multiple injuries. West Bay Rescue 2 is uh, lifting mechanics bay. We have five POB for Kalia Tonga. We have an ETA of 25, 25 minutes. 16 year old Cade has been hit by another motocross bike while competing in a race meet. Ambulance crews have reported that he's suffering severe stomach pain and could be bleeding internally. He needs urgent hospital care. He's just 25 minutes flying time from Auckland at Patitonga near Ngātea. So we're um, currently flying down to uh, Pariatonga, which is south of uh, Ngātia, to a motorcycle club there, where there is a 16-year-old patient who's complaining of abdominal pain. We'll be landing shortly. Landing site's coming up on the nose now, and you'll clear up the door if you want to. Roger. Tear the door. Yep. Just, just behind the ambulance. Roger. Roger. Car's well clear. Then you clear out. I'll be shutting down. Unless you tell me otherwise. Okay, next time. No worries. We'll go to look. Dr. David Lang and intensive care paramedic Russell Clark arrived to find that the ambulance crew is still very concerned about Cade's condition. Hello. This is Cade. He's 16 years old. Okay, he's been riding his motorbike today. He's come off and another rider at speed has gone over his back. Right. So the rest rate came down to 20 and the heart rate came down to 100, 110. When he came to us, he was quite pale and clammy too. Was he? Okay. Yeah. From a cold blood loss, we can ultrasound and root. Ultrasound and root. Do you want to do it now? Um, or? Why don't we do it in root? Yep. Okay. okay. Cool. Yep. Let's do that. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Where is that pain? Is that in your back or somewhere else? Okay. Russell and David decide to get moving fast. If he has internal bleeding, he will need urgent surgery. No pain. In, like he's come off his bike and he's been run over by the next bike and it's sort of run over his lower back. Um, so there's been a bit of initial concern about his uh, vital signs being quite low, which might indicate that he's had some sort of internal bleed today. We'll do, we'll do a bit of an ultrasound in the uh, helicopter to have a look and see if there's any blood in his abdomen or anything, which, which could be a complication. The 21-year-old Emmanuel is en route to Middlemore Hospital after he was saved from drowning by his father, Anthony. A very lucky young man. Could have been another statistic, but for the uh, actions of some people that were keeping an eye on things, he's, he's survived today, so uh, I would think he realises he's pretty darn lucky too. Although Emmanuel has regained consciousness, he's still at high risk of secondary drowning. Evening, Middlemore, West Bay Rescue One. Uh, we're coming to you from Cathedral Cove with a 21-year-old male as a result of a drowning. He's currently status 2, saturating at 99 on oxygen. He has some uh, wheeze and um, slight laboured breathing. We'll see him in recess 4, thanks. I'll be in recess 4, thank you. Happy just to take the weight there, that's perfect. Emmanuel is now just minutes away from the emergency department. Got some warm in there. Well done. Intensive care paramedic Marcel tries to get a clearer understanding of how the incident occurred. What do you remember after sort of waking up and coming to? Yeah, just, I just remember lying on the ground and spewing up. Yeah, OK. You're a lucky man. Um, just remember, if you're ever in the waves just, and you're getting stuck, just put your hand up, all right, and try and float and not 
not go against the current. It's the best thing to do. Get life to tell the tale, which is a really good thing. And his father, Anthony, would do the same thing all over again. The only thing I think is he's my son, so I have to do whatever I can to help him out of the water. And it was scary. Um, it was scary. But I am very pleased for those who were there to help out. Um, very helpful. And I'm pleased with the paramedic. Their time, they respond to the call. And also, I'd like to thank to the the Westpac Rescue Team for a fantastic job they have done. Yeah, so I think Dad um, is sort of the, the gravity of what, what sort of happened and him being involved with the rescue has really impacted on him. You can see him in, in his eyes that he thought he had lost his son there at one stage. He said he'd just about given up completely and um, they really struggled and pulled him up onto the beach. And um, Yeah, so he's, he's, he's happy to be here. He's happy his son's alive and he's happy he's in a good condition and can be with his son. So, yeah, really good. Tell us if you get more sore, if you get sick, or you get cold, OK? We'll fix any of those if they crop up. You're not feeling nauseous at all? At Patetonga, 16-year-old Cade is being readied for transport to hospital after his motocross crash. OK. OK. One, two, three. He has severe back and abdominal pain and could have injured some vital organs. Thanks, guys. See ya. North Cole, West Bank 2. West Bank 2, go ahead. The elliptic now, 7 POB, destination will be Waikato. We've got an NTA of uh, 1245. Copy. Okay, today he has been riding at a motocross uh, event. He's come off his motocross bike and he's been run over by the next rider. Um, he's gone over his lower back, um, so the main concern there was um, he's damaged some internal organs. We're taking him to Waikato ED uh, for a full, full assessment. North Cole. Westpac 2, we're now landing at Waikato Hospital. OK, clear out, shutting down. Roger. On touchdown, the crew rush Cade into the ED, where the emergency medical team is ready to swing into action. Near Dargaville, the medics are carrying out a life-saving emergency procedure on Malia, whose severe head injury has caused serious breathing problems. So if you like. OK, you got epiglottis? Epiglottis. Yep, yeah, just it, pop it in there, that's it. Now lift up, Ross. Beautiful view of the cords there. Bougie through. Bougie. The medic's only option now is to attempt an intubation, which will give them control of her breathing. How am I sets there? Um, sats are 100. It's 40 seconds. Okay, okay you've got bougie, bougie is through. through the cords. I have the bougie past the tube. Passing over the tube. It's a complicated procedure. My bougie, your tube. I have the tube. Yeah. That leaves no room for error. Passing the tube through the cords. We are 21 at the teeth. Remove the bougie. Bougie coming Inflate out. the cuff. Cuff is up. I have the tube. Tube. Ventilate. Ventilate, please. We've got nice and tidal CO2 trace. All right, okay, so here's for your tube. Cool. Can, let, can we just have a listen before yeah, you yeah. Um, uh, check them? The other one's already in place here, Ross. OK, great. And bagging. Beautiful air on people's sides. Probably a little bit less than that volume-wise. She's pretty fairly petite, right. so, yeah. OK. Right. okay that's, I'll uh, take that, Tinny, if you want to run yep. the RS, post-RSI checklist. The team have succeeded, and all is well for now, as Halley Med 1 takes off with the other Status 1 patient, who was also a passenger in the vehicle. Uh, at the moment, we've uh, intubated the patient. Um, she's on the ventilator, so we're just packing up a gear and getting ready to move. While Malia is now stable enough to be transported to Auckland Starship Hospital, she is still in a bad way. The crew will try their best to keep her from deteriorating further during the 30-minute flight. One, two, three. Yep. Lovely. Yep. Pressure's just dropped a wee bit, guys. Okay, right to 
My obstacle got the wire on my memory. Malia will have a long road to recovery. Malia made it to Auckland Hospital, where surgeons spent many hours reconstructing her fractured skull. She was in an induced coma for eight days and had three months of intensive rehab. She is now back home with her family, but she has no recollection of the accident and struggles with the long-term effects of a traumatic brain injury. She spent about three weeks in Starship Hospital with her recovery through there, and she went into uh, they call the Wilson Centre, which is a rehab centre for uh, brain injuries. But she's come home, she's back in school uh, two, day, two hours a day, four days a week. And slowly, over the next months, that will increase day by day. It all becomes better as the tiredness goes and everything. Yeah. It will be a long road to a full recovery but she has the loving support of a big family. Just one of her uncles that gets to fight over her. <laughs> we all want to spend time with her. So aunties and uncles and Nana and everyone, and lots of family that, that love her a bit. And we all want to share and play a big part in their life. Emmanuel had an X-ray of his lungs, and after five hours of close monitoring, he was sent home with the all clear. Cade had two fractured ribs. He spent two months recovering from the accident, but is now back on his bike. And Malia's uncle praises the Westpac rescue helicopter for getting her to hospital in time. All of our family is just, just amazing to get the service. <laughs> potentially saved Malia's life. Very lucky, eh? <laughs> <laughs>